Dr. Christian's office. The Vaseline Program, presenting another Dr. Christian prize play called The Shaw by Robert P. Toland of South Boston, Massachusetts, starring Jean Herschel as Dr. Christian with Helen Clare in the role of Judy Price. Scene, the soundstage at Colossal Pictures. There's pin drop silence as the leading man holds his lovely lady close. Tell me, tell me, he pleads earnestly, what is my fate? And then softly whispered, comes the reply. Your hair needs combing, dearie. Cut, cut, cut. Yes, men, movie them or Main Street. Unkempt, unruly hair or that other sign of dry scalp, loose dandruff, can cut your chances with girls to zero. But why let that happen? Use Vaseline hair tonic. It supplements natural scalp oils, contains no alcohol or other drying ingredients. Vaseline hair tonic checks dry scalp. Shake five drops of Vaseline hair tonic on your comb or directly on your hair each morning. This checks dryness, wins attractive, alive-looking hair that stays neat. Then before shampooing, give yourself a brisk Vaseline hair tonic massage to loosen dandruff, stop itchy tightness. For double care, both scalp and hair, ask your druggist for Vaseline Hair Tonic. Last week on this program, Gene Hirschhold announced the fourth annual competition for the $2,000 Dr. Christian Award for 1945 in which all writers, amateurs as well as professionals, are invited to compete. If you wish to see your play presented on this transcontinental network by a fine company of actors headed by Gene Herschelt, why don't you try for the award? The competition closes March 31st, 1945. Full details of the award are given in a free folder of rules, which you can get by writing to the Dr. Christian Award, 17 State Street, New York for New York. And now for our play. The scene is Dr. Christian's office. It's late evening. The last patient has left, and Judy, after finishing some work, steps to the door of the doctor's private office. Dr. Christian? Uh, Dr. Christian? Miss Scholl. Is the woman? What? Oh, he's asleep. Huh? What's that? Oh, <laughs> it's you, Judy. I guess there must have been dosing. Mm, you said something about a shawl. Did I? Yes, I imagine I did. Well, is she beautiful? Beautiful who? The one who wore the shawl, of course. Must have been a woman. A woman? Yes, I suppose she must have been. I wish I knew. Oh, Dr. Christian, you have been dreaming. Oh, I think not. Then what's the matter? Matter? Yes, the matter. Oh, maybe it's none of my business, but for the past week, something's been troubling you. Couldn't I help? I might have known you'd notice. Perhaps I should have told you before. Uh, sit down, Judy. Thank you, Dr. Christian. Now, please tell me. Judy, an old man died last week. He was a simple old man. Childish, he so. Because his mind had been clouded for the greater part of his life. You mean Mr. Colby? Yes, I mean old Arthur Colby. You know his story. Well, I know he lived here for ages and ages, and he must have been a hundred years old. Do you remember how he used to talk about the wonderful thing that happened to him? That wonderful event he could never remember? I'll bet there was a woman in Arthur Colby's life. But I guess we'll never know. Won't we, Judy? Well, I'm, I'm going to try to find out. But he's dead, Dr. Christian. Is he? I wonder. Now, Dr. Christian... Oh, now, don't be alarmed. I know that a week ago, Arthur Colby died... In his childlike simplicity, he would have loved his own funeral with the soldiers and the crowds and the newspapers eulogizing one of our very last Civil War veterans. Oh, yes, Arthur Colby is dead. And yet, I wonder. I'm not sure I understand what you're driving at. Oh, you've heard most of this before, but be patient, Judy. It has a bearing on what comes next. I've heard it so many times. I can hear it now, just as if the old man was speaking. My name is Arthur Colby. 
Long years ago, I fought for this, my country. That was in my youth, and I was strong. And I can remember those days, because I had drunk of the wine of youth, a heady wine, full-bodied and lasting. Well can I recall the day the bullet struck me down. At Gettysburg it was. But after that, I cannot remember. There is something of wonder I must remember, but I cannot. Is it a woman? Is it something she wore? I cannot bring it back. But there is something I must leave to this land of mine. Something I must remember. I must. I must. <laughs> Arthur Colby lived out there all alone on his pension. Physically, he was something of a marvel, but his mind never recovered from the bullet wounds in his head. Yes, I know, Dr. Christian. Yes, but there's one thing you don't know, Judy. I was with Arthur Colby on the day he died, and just before his death, he did remember. He remembered what his poor, twisted mind had been groping for all through the years. Oh, what was it? I don't know. But if my experience as a doctor counts for anything, I'll swear that he had one lucid moment, one final moment of complete sanity. He made a valiant effort to tell me before it was too late. The time is short. I must remember. The man beside me is a doctor, a man of kindness and understanding. The flag is coming down. But before the night falls, I must tell this man. He will know. If I could only remember, I must. I must. Wait. The hospital. The cold. I was lying there. And then it happened to me. To young Arthur Colby of all people. I can tell him now, this good doctor. But, but the night is coming swiftly. I have not the strength. Yet, I wrote it. The shawl, find it. For a mannequin. Judy, I'm going out to Arthur Colby's house. Dr. Christian, you're not. But I am, Judy. I must. I must find that shawl for America. Why? Why? Way out there to that desolate place. And tonight of all nights. Oh, can't you wait until morning? I'm afraid not. I borrowed the key from Mrs. Williams, who kept an eye on old Arthur during the last few years. And as I have a few free hours tonight, I'm... But what's I'm... so important about a woman's shawl? That's what I'm going to find out, if I can. All right, I'll get ready. Oh, you'll do nothing of the kind. You get some rest. And let you go out there all alone, over the worst road in the county? I should say not. Not while you're hearing a mysterious voice. Very well, Judy. Come along. That's the house up ahead. Yes, I see it. It gives me the creeps. A gloomy shape against the sky. Sorry you came? No, not as long as you're with me. I wouldn't come out here in a tank by myself. Ah, it's no place for a woman. I should have had more sense than let you come. It's too late now. Well, here we are. Oh, Dr. Christian, look at this old house. Those black windows, they, they look like eyes. Like brooding eyes. Hey, hey, here, young lady, enough of that. Uh, can you see all right? I, I guess so. Oh, what's that? Oh, it's only 
going here now. Let's see now. Let's see. Here's the key. I'll open the door. Are you with me, Judy? Just try to get rid of me. Heavens, it's black. I, I can't see a thing. I think the lamp is in the living room. This way, Judy. Old Arthur certainly lived in the past. He never had electricity either. I have a match somewhere. Yeah, here it is. I like this lamp. There. That's better, isn't it? Oh, it certainly is. I'm going to sit down for a moment. I'm just as nervous as a cat and tired. You'd better sit down yourself, Dr. Christian. I'm afraid I'm getting a little old for this midnight sleuthing. <clears throat> That's better. Just relax for a little while. Well, not for long. The sooner we start hunting for the show, the sooner we'll be home. But at least we have a clue. A clue? Well, don't you remember what Arthur said? I wrote it. I wrote it. Oh, you mean there may be a, a diary. That's it, a diary. Well, something of the sort. A diary. Maybe we'll find the story of the woman in old Arthur's life. Well, where do we start? I think we'll start in the room where Arthur Colby died. Oh, all right. Where is it? It's on the other side of the hall. I'll take the lamp. Now. Now along here. And in this way. There. This is the room. I'll put the lamp on the table. What a bare room. Table, bed, chair... A closet. A closet. I wonder what's in it. Nothing much, I guess. Let's see. Some linen and clothes. Nothing like a shawl. I don't think there's anything here, Dr. Christian. No, I don't see anything either, but... But what? Judy, there's something in this room we must find. I can hear those words so strongly. The shawl. The shawl. It's here, Judy. It must be. But where, Dr. Christian? Except for what we've both seen, there's no place it could be. Yes, that's so, Judy. I guess I was mistaken. Still, I... Oh, well, never mind. We'll try the kitchen. Oh, I shouldn't think we'd find much there. But if you want to... Maybe not. I'll take the lamp. There. Now I'll go first. Huh? Why, what is it, Judy? Look, Dr. Christian. Under the head of the bed. When you picked up the lamp, something gleamed. Under the bed? Here, uh, hold the lamp, Judy. Y yes. Bring it down near the floor while I look. Oh, I... Well, you're right. It's an old trunk. The metal lock caught the light. Uh, I'll put it out. There. There it is. An old trunk. I knew we'd find something. I'll lift the lid. Huh. Why, this trunk hasn't been opened for years. Now, let's see what's in it. Uh, suppose you put the lamp here on the chair, Judy. Oh, all right. Uh, that's it. Hmm. Well, it seems pretty full, doesn't it? It's chock full, Dr. Christian. I'll start taking the things out. Have to be very careful, though. Everything is so old. Here are some blankets on the top. Here's a Bible. And here... Dr. Christian. A shawl. A shawl. I knew it. Judy. Judy, what's wrong? You're white as a ghost. I... I just felt a ghost. What? But well, here, Judy, sit down. Let me take the shawl. The shawl. I wasn't dreaming, Dr. Christian. You felt it, too. For a moment, I... Oh, no, it couldn't be. But it was. For that one moment, someone was in this room. Someone strong, yet gentle and kind. It was as if a voice said, I was tired, too, but all will be well. Dr. Christian, what does it mean? Mean? I don't know. Maybe we are both dreaming. Sometimes the human mind plays queer tricks. And yet, 
I'd swear that in that one moment the lamp flared up and died down. And Judy. Yes, Dr. Christian. Judy, I'm not tired. Not now. Nor am I, Dr. Christian. Neither of us is tired now. Well, Judy, we found it. Yes, this old shawl is Arthur Colby's great glory. But what does it mean? What is its significance? Let's go back to the trunk. Very well, Judy. I'll hold the lamp and you'll see what's left. All right, Dr. Christian. What's this? Oh, it's his old uniform. Blue and gold. All faded and tarnished. And here's a sword. So rusty. Poor Mr. Colby. How could he have forgotten? Oh, Judy, there. There in the corner. Where? Oh, I see. The diary, Dr. Christian. The diary. Oh, be careful taking it out. It's liable to fall apart. Oh, yes. That's it. Now, uh, put it on the table. The binding's coming apart. I'll open it. See the first page? Yes, Judy. The pages are yellowed. And the ink faded. I can hardly make it out. I'm sure I can. This is the property of Captain Arthur Colby, of the staff of General George G. Meade, Army of the Potomac. Isn't the writing beautiful, Dr. Christian? Indeed it is. Just like copperplate. We can't possibly read all of it tonight. No, Judy, but suppose you turn to the end. That may help. After he was wounded... I'm afraid he didn't do much more writing. All right, Dr. Christian. A lot of blank pages in the back. Wait, here's the last written page. Very short. It says, Tomorrow the surgeon will operate. I fear the future. Something strange is happening to my mind. I can't remember. But after the wonderful event of yesterday, I don't seem to care. Even if death is near, mine eyes have seen the glory. Oh, Dr. Christian. Uh, turn back to the entry before this last one, Judy. What does it say? It's dated July 6, 1863. And it says... We were taken off the train today and carried to the hospital. There were about a hundred of us lying outside while they made room. And although it was a warm day, I was cold. I kept saying over and over again, I'm cold, I'm cold. And then it happened. There was a bustle among the attendants and a shadow fell across my face. Standing over me was a tall figure with a shawl across his shoulders. As I looked up, he took off his shawl and smiling a sad, wondrous smile, he tucked it around me. That man was Abraham Lincoln. It wasn't a woman after all. Why, Judy, don't tell me you're disappointed. Oh, of course not, Dr. Christian. Why, this diary and the shawl, they're wonderful historic relics. And to think they should have been right here in River's End all these years without anyone knowing. Judy, you won't find all of American history in the books and museums. A lot of it still lives in attics and old trunks. And the curtain descends on another Dr. Christian prize play with our star, Gene Herschel, waiting to tell you more about the Dr. Christian Award for 1945. But first, a word from Judy Price. The stork's a busy bird these days, and many of his little bundles are inclined to cry and fuss because their tender skin is red and chafed. So, mothers, 
Be sure you have Vaseline Petroleum Jelly on hand to relieve baby's irritated skin. Smooth it on the touchy places. Massage it lightly into the folds of the skin where baby's clothing rubs. Vaseline Petroleum Jelly brings baby three important benefits. One, it soothes the irritated skin. Two, it forms a protective film that helps keep out infection when the skin is broken. And three, Vaseline Petroleum Jelly helps to promote healing. Use it as generously as you please. It's gentle, pure, safe. And baby skin isn't the only kind it helps. Vaseline Petroleum Jelly is splendid for your skin, too, when it's chafed or sore. So keep an extra jar on hand for yourself. And remember, there are many petroleum jellies on the market, but only one bears the trademark Vaseline. That trademark, owned by the Cheeseboro Manufacturing Company, is your guarantee of absolute purity. And now, here is Jean Herschel. Thank you very much. We have a message here from your government concerning the need for all of us to continue to purchase war bonds to the limit of our ability. There is no safer investment in the whole world than our war bonds. They are a profitable investment too. For each three dollars you invest, you get four dollars back when the bonds matures. So increase your quota if you can and do it now. The price play you heard tonight was written by Robert P. Tolan of South Boston, Massachusetts, and is dedicated at his request to the memory of his mother, whose constant encouragement and constructive criticism have made him three times a winner in as many Dr. Christian competitions. The fourth consecutive competition for the $2,000 Dr. Christian Award for 1945 started last week and will close on March 31st, 1945. Anybody can enter a script and try for the award. And in addition to the award winner, many other scripts are selected by the judges for use on the program and paid for at not less than $150 nor more than $350. So far, we presented 138 prize plays on this coast-to-coast -coast network. Since merit and suitability for the Dr. Christian program are the only requirements, amateurs and professionals are both welcome to compete. Time doesn't permit me to give more details now, but if you are interested in trying for the $2,000 Dr. Christian Award for 1945, won't you write for the folder of rules to Dr. Christian Award, 17 State Street, New York, 4, New York. Next week we have a prize play called Golden Bells by Charles Ben Davis of Memphis, Tennessee. We invite you all to listen next Wednesday evening, same time and same station. And until then I'll say good night. Of all tips for chapped lips, the best is Vaseline Lip Ice. Healing starts almost instantly. In two sizes at 10 and 25 cents, Vaseline Lip Ice. And remember, friends, if you are interested in trying for the $2,000 Dr. Christian Award for 1945, write for the folder of rules, the free folder, to Dr. Christian Award, 17 State Street, New York, for New York. We'll repeat the address, Dr. Christian Award, 17 State Street, New York for New York. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.